right, welcome right back to the action here. 10-23 to go, 13-10 in favor of the red team. A close game for the Platypie. First, close first half is Warner. Well, not a good shot there by Warner. You know, Warner, uh, that shot may have looked like a good idea, but the result was not good there for Warner. That's true, and if I can go back to what I was talking about, Drew Pilgrim just came back from a uh, rehearsal with a jazz band. At, you know, from what I've been hearing, that might not have been a good idea. Well, we'll see, you know, the audition for the talent show, like uh, Jonathan Neal did last night. Um, I'm not sure when they'll hear, but... Uh, but, well, best of luck to them, you know, you want everyone to have a chance to display their talents. Now, regardless of how good or how bad they may be. That's true. You know, Bryan College Talent Show is kind of a recent, uh, recent thing here on campus. I can't recall having one before last year for the entire school. We've always had the freshman, freshman talent yep. show, of course. But now we have an all-school talent show. Which Oh, I think it's a, a good wow, I'm not, people. well, we're going to be watching that later and wondering what in the world Jonathan Warner was thinking because it didn't look like he was shooting the ball, rather trying to pass it to someone under the net, but there was no one there but the opposing you team. You know, Grayton, I think what happened there was he forgot to display his talent, which is what talent shows are all about. Absolutely. This is, uh, if this is an audition for the talent show, it's not going great for either team, really. So they may have to uh, confine Although themselves I, to the summer I gymnasium. With the caliber of the talent show's past, this basketball game is fairly comparable to the entertainment value you would get from one of those. True, true, and mostly that in part's in part because the uh, MCs have been so terrible in the past. But hopefully we have we have been informed of who the MC is for this year, and it should be good. Uh, hopefully, we'll see. At least there's a glimmer of hope that it could be slightly entertaining. You know that's true. And you know, I've always wondered, why haven't they gotten us to do that? I mean, we're semi-professional broadcasters now. We have a successful series of commentaries yes. going, and it seems like we'd be natural choices for hosting such an event. Well, they have one more year to uh, give us the option. We'll see if they do. Our senior year, of course, still in front of us. And, well, as we've been talking, 17-10, so the red team has got a few more, a uh, little more distance between themselves. Although, seven-point deficit for the Platypi at this point in the game is not bad, especially against this good team here, uh, 7.49 to go. But if you think back, great, and this is how it's always happened with the Platypi. They'll stay competitive for a little bit, and then they slowly start to slip under and let the other team mount that score on top of them. Now, we saw them put up a ton of points in the second half, but... As we said, that was in the practice gym. The Platypi still got to be getting used to playing in this full court here. Still there. So, they're going to need to... I miss that practice gym, actually. I kind of do, too. You know, it's a lot quieter in there. And uh, we get better seats. And it's a little more cozy. It really is. You know, you, when you're in the practice gym, you're thinking how you'd like to be in the big times, the big gym, on the main stage. But then you get no, they're still. You know, it's not all as glamorous as it looks. You know who's not had a good game so far? Jeez. Jonathan, well, no, you've done okay. Jonathan Warner has not had a good game. And he's gotten the ball stolen from him multiple times. It looks like uh, they're taking a time out here. 21-10, so it's kind of started to slip away from the platypi. And, you know, frankly, it was bound to happen at some point. 6.48 to go here this first half. At different points during the first half or early second half, they just kind of start to lose it. That's true, and, you know, going back to Jonathan Warner, I think a lot of what's happening with him is he just gets frustrated. And you can't play basketball when you're frustrated. Nope. You need a lot of focus because basketball is a very fast-paced sport. You know, sometimes things happen literally in the blink of an eye, and you have to be able to perceive that and adjust to it in an instant, Straighten. Well, we see here Warner sitting on the bench as his teammates stand and talk about what just happened. Uh, Warner probably trying to figure out himself what just happened. Uh, David Corwin looks like he's throwing out a few signals there, although he'll take a seat on the bench uh, coming out of this timeout. Ethan Hickey coming up the stairs there. It looks like he's going to go talk to Corey Hartfield. Is Corey here? Did Corey show up too? You know, I'm not sure, Drayton. Uh, last I heard, he was heading to the library, putting academics in front of uh, 
intramural sport. You know, generally when Corey says he's not going to show up, he ends up showing up. So we'll keep an eye out for him, although he's probably not going to play. That's true. Here's Warner trying to, uh, nope, all right, well, Warner trying to get something going there out of this timeout. He really needs to get something going or the final five are going to have a chance. And guess what? Another whistle by TJ, uh, JT, excuse me, JT. Big difference there, Grady. Yeah, we may have to add a whistle count when we post this video and just see how many we get because, let me tell you, you've seen quite a few in this first half. There are going to be a lot more where that came from in the second half as he realizes his 15 minutes of fame is ending. He'll go crazy on that thing. You know, 15 minutes of fame looks like a lot until you're about halfway through it. And then you realize 15 minutes is only like a quarter of an hour. Well, five looks like uh, 5.32 to play in this one. You know, we're way up here, and even I'm having trouble seeing the clock. One, one of the reasons is my contact prescription is a little out of date, but we'll get that fixed over spring break. Well, you're doing better than I am. Well, you know, that's true, and I'm thankful for that. Adam Franklin goes to the line. Adam Franklin, the late addition of the Plata Pie team, he's made a little bit of an impact. There's that's with the last couple of games. Can't recall seeing him on the free throw line before, but it looks like he's making good on it. Yeah, you know, we haven't seen many people at the free throw line, like we said, mostly because JT hasn't been repping our games. And that one goes off the rim. All right, well, we have about 4.30 to play. This one's still 21-10, 11-point deficit. Flat probably gonna look to get something going. They really need to get something going here, Drayton. Well, as we've talked about many a time, these games don't really count for all that much. They're just preparation for the tournament. But the tournament's coming on pretty fast, and the Platify really need to get in condition for the higher level of competition that's about to come their way. Yeah, you know, it's a 9 seed versus 8 seed in the play-in game, so that will be a very interesting game as Drew being very aggressive here. Apparently he got tired of all that Kenny G he was playing. Yeah. I think we're gonna go quick and take a time out here so we actually have something worth uh, showing here in this final few minutes of this game. As a steal by the well, no, okay, they get it back. The half, yeah, a few minutes to go. So we're gonna go ahead and take a break now. Uh, we'll be right back to join the action. We'll watch this as uh, Brian puts up a three. Nope. All right, we'll be right back. On basketball. 